Hey guys, I am so excited to finally share my little bunny basket in a video tutorial for you guys. A lot of you have been asking, especially when it comes to the ear part, so I am finally sharing it. So this is one of the first ones I made a couple years ago. It is Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick in Gray Marble. And I just have a piece of floral foam in here that I glued all these faux flowers onto and then I put a little Spanish moss around to help cover the gaps. So this was originally made for more of a decorative piece than an actual Easter basket. Um, my idea was, you know, to put it on your counter with these florals in it or some Easter candy. I would not suggest this as an Easter basket that your little kid is gonna carry around because I mean, the ears are a little floppy. They do sit upright, but if your child carries it around, they're gonna bend and get floppy. It's just the nature of the pattern. But if it's sitting there, you can adjust the ears and they will stay in place. I'll show you those a little better at the end of the pattern when we work the ear portion. So, um, like I said, it's made with woolies thick and quick. This is a size six super bulky yarn. We're gonna use the color carousel in the one that we're working up today. And we use two strands held together of this to make it extra sturdy. If you're not used to working with extra thick yarn, the two strands might be a little tough on your hands, but you will get used to it. I work with it all the time and it's not an issue for me, so don't give up. Um, I also made a little tiny one last year. I'm going to put a picture here because I don't have one made, but I used this K and C cozy yarn from um, Joann's. This brand I believe is exclusive to Joann's. This one is 50% wool, 50% acrylic blend, and it's kind of like a roving yarn almost. And it turned out so cute. I used these little tiny succulents and I put it in there and then put some Spanish moss around the top. These succulents I got at Michael's and I found them again this year. It is January, 2024. And you guys, these were on sale for 88 cents this year. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, these are really cute to put in this. On this yarn, I only used one strand and it's also a six super bulky, but the texture made it really sturdy and it looked cute. I tried only the mini in this size. I never tried the smaller version, so I'm not exactly sure how that will work up, but I used the color seashell. I had trouble finding this color again this year. It might be seasonal. They might be bringing it out again soon. If not, this brand did have a lot of other cute colors. So I'll go ahead and link all of this below so you know what you're working with. <clears throat> For the tail, I use Lion Brand Go For Faux. I typically use this Baked Alaska color. I believe this one is in the right packaging, but it's been used, so it could have gotten switched around. But if it's correct, this color is called the color Husky. And this is a size six super bulky yarn as well. So for the basket, I used an eight millimeter L crochet hook. You need scissors, a tapestry needle. For the tail, you can either um, sew it on to the project at the end with the tails of the little um, tail, or it's almost like a little pom-pom that we create, or you can use hot glue and glue it on. So I'm gonna, make my camera a little wider because I want to show you this extra large one I made. So isn't that cute? Let me see if I can zoom out. My camera won't zoom out any anymore. Let's see. There we go. So if you saw my project a couple weeks ago, I did a color block basket. Um, using Bernat Blanket Yarn Extra Thick, which is exclusive to Joann's. And I had a bunch of the yarn left over, so I gave it a try. And you guys, look at this basket. It turned out so cool. This yarn, 
it this yarn is really hard to work with because it's so thick but once you get used to it it's so cute and this the baskets with it turn out so good so this is believe it or not the mini size basket from my pattern but i believe i skipped one round i'll put all the instructions in my blog post i think i just skipped one round of single crochet on the side before i started the ears so with this pattern i used this really big hook it's the x 25 millimeter but once i got to the ears they were way too floppy with this hook they wouldn't stand up at all <clears throat> so i switched to a smaller hook this one is the p15 millimeter and i did that on only the ear portion the sink or the slip stitches around the edge i still went back to the bigger hook so when i did the ears with this hook i didn't work very tight because if you work tight with this hook they turned out really small so i worked a little bit loose with this smaller hook and they turned out pretty good they're like a little floppy but not much if you're sitting it there for decorative purposes these ears definitely hold their shape and sit upright and then i created an extra large tail and i'll put the pattern for the larger size tail um, on the blog post as well and all the links will be in the caption to the video so let me get set up so we can start working on the basket. We're gonna use this yarn and we are going to do the small size today, not the mini size. So I'll get my yarn set up and I will be right back. Okay, so let's get started on the small basket. Like I said before, we're using two strands of yarn held together. With the woolies thick and quick, I pull from the center and the outside and it works fine. The yarn doesn't tangle very easily. Certain yarns, if you're doing two strands held together, it's easier if you have two skeins of yarn. Um, you just kind of have to experiment with what's right for you. Typically, I have enough yarn in stock where I can use two skeins, but on this particular color, I only had one. So I pulled from the outside and center. So we are using a relatively small hook for two strands of this yarn, but you really want a smaller hook when you're working on baskets because it creates a really um, sturdy basket that is not very floppy. So it can be hard, like I said, it can be a little tough to get used to at first, but it gets easier as you go along. Okay, so the first round, we're gonna create a magic circle. So I wrap the yarn around my finger twice. I insert my hook under all of the loops, pull up a loop, chain one, and then this pattern calls for 10 half double crochet in the magic ring or magic circle. So yarn over, insert your hook into the circle, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Yarn over, insert your hook into the circle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through three. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, you have to kind of pull to give yourself room if your circle starts closing up. Eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so with the magic ring, you want to kind of pull these loops here. and it pulls the circle closed. It's harder with the two strands held together. I'm gonna actually pull right here. There you go. Certain yarns, you can't pull the tail end on the magic circle because it just breaks the yarn, but the woolies is thick, so it's not a problem. Okay. 
Now we are going to join I got all messed up here. Okay, now we're going to join with a slip stitch. When you're joining, I always pull the working yarn a little bit tight so we can get that as small as possible. Okay, so that's round one. Okay, round two, we're gonna work two half double crochet in each stitch around. We're gonna chain one, which does not count as the first stitch, then half double crochet, two in each stitch. So that's two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna go ahead and finish around the circle. We should have 20 total. And then I'll meet you at the end when we join and then we'll start round three. Okay, you guys, we finished round two and now we're going to join. You'll see that I switched to a new crochet hook. I literally just broke my plastic crochet hook. The, I love working with those plastic crochet hooks, but they do break over time. I think I'm on my second or third, but for some reason, I like the way the tips on those are. They, when you're using... The plastic ones with really thick yarn, it doesn't seem to get caught as easily. It just slides right on, on the hook. So I have another one ordered. Anyway, um, we'll see how we can make it work with this one because I'm not as used to it. But anyway, so we are going to join to the first half double crochet. Again, the um, chain ones do not count as a stitch. Okay, so round three, we're going to sing or sorry, half double crochet in the first stitch, two half double crochet in the second stitch, and repeat that all the way around for 30 stitches total. So again, the beginning we chain one. See, you can see I'm already having trouble with this hook. Okay. There we go. Okay, so it's half double crochet in the first stitch. two half double crochet in the second stitch. Okay, one half double crochet, and then two half double crochet. So it's just a basic increase. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the third round and meet you back here and show you how I join. Okay, so round three is finished. I'm going to show you the method I use to join before we start the sides, it just creates a less visible seam right here. It's called the no cut join method. It's just another form of an invisible join method. You just don't cut the yarn afterwards like you would with an invisible seam or join. So basically you pull this loop up just a little bit longer than normal. You insert your crochet hook under the two loops of the first stitch of the round that you just completed. But you enter it from the back to the front, just like that under both loops. Put the loop on your hook, pull it through, and then kind of adjust it. There's two different methods I've seen here. Some people pull it really tight to where you can't really see it. But I actually find that if you pull it to where the loop created here is about the same size as these loops, it actually blends it all together a little bit better. You just wanna make sure you don't accidentally work an extra stitch in this loop. So once you do that, all you do is chain one and then single crochet around like you normally would. So this next round, round four, we're starting the sides and it's a single crochet under both loops, or sorry, under the back loop only. So both loops would have you working under those two loops right there. 
which it's the loops that form like a little V. The back loop, this is the front loop, and this is the back loop. We are only working under the back loop. So we already chained one, and then we're just gonna single crochet in the back loops only. Okay, and you just keep doing that all the way around. We're gonna have 30 stitches total. Okay, I wanna mention something here that I get asked a lot. So the yarn that's facing you, so this is facing me right here as I work. This is the front of my project, or sorry, the, yeah, the front side of my project. It's going to be the outside of the basket. So this is the right side that's facing me. If you start crocheting this, and instead of flipping your bottom under here and working around, your project is going to start working inside out. And it's fine if you work that way, but you need to make sure to flip it right side out when you're finished because it's gonna be inside out and it's gonna look funny. So see how I'm now working on the inside of the basket, but this is the actual outside of the basket. It's just because it kind of curl, has a tendency to curl in this way. So you wanna make sure you flip it and you're working on the outside of the basket like that. Hopefully that makes sense. And you'll notice that it's gonna look a little bit different if you're working it inside out. Cause I get a lot of people that send me pictures and it just looks a little odd. Like see how much different that looks versus that. Anyway, I'm gonna finish the single crochets around the back loop, back loop only. And I will meet you back here in just one minute to finish the next round. Okay, so I just finished round four and we just join like normal into the first single crochet with a slip stitch. Again, I always pull this working yarn a little bit tight. We want this as small as we can get it because it creates a smaller seam. Okay, so let me show you how the sides are starting to work up. So I like to work in the back loop only because it creates that little ridge right there around the bottom. And it just looks a little more defined. You can work in both loops if you want and it will just be a little bit more rounded and a little bit less defined. So see how that's coming together? And let me turn it inside out so you can see the difference. See, if your basket's looking like that, and it just kind of looks odd and it's not very defined going up the sides, you're probably working it inside out. And it's no big deal, you just gotta flip it back around. It doesn't affect your stitches, you don't even have to redo anything. Okay, so we are on one, two, three, four, round five, and it's just single crochet around, working under both loops. So the next few rounds are exactly the same as this. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. I think it's one, two, three, four, five. I think it's up to round eight, I'll double check. But you just do single crochet all the way around and I will finish that up and meet you back and then we'll start working on the ears. Okay, I finished row eight. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, round eight, not rows. So you can see how sturdy, like it's it's really sturdy. You wanna make sure you maintain somewhat of a tight tension when you're working baskets. So the only difference on round eight versus rounds five through seven is after you join with the slip stitch, you um, 
are going to turn your work. So just so you guys can see a little bit better, I'm going to mark the last stitch of the round I just worked, which is this one. And then I'm going to mark the first stitch of the round, which is that stitch that I just joined to. Because now that we're turning our work, things get a little harder to see and to figure out what stitch you're working into. Okay, so I mark those stitches. So you turn your work after round eight. And this is the round that we're gonna start working the bunny ears. So you turn your work and then we slip stitch into the first stitch. So when you turn your work, the first stitch then becomes the last stitch of the round that you just worked, which I just marked with the stitch marker right there. So we're gonna slip stitch into that. I'm gonna remove this marker now so it's out of my way. Okay. So we slip stitch into that. Then it's easier for me if I turn the basket inside out, just easier for me to work with that part facing. If you wanna keep it the way it is, that's fine. So if you turn it inside out like this, you need to remember to flip it right side out at the end. Okay, so we're gonna work our first ear, then we're gonna slip stitch all the way around and we'll be back here at the end and we'll work the second ear. So this is one ear only. And we're going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I will say I use pretty normal tension right there. You don't want it too tight because that's what causes the ears to curl. But if you do it too loose, then they'll be floppy. So I would say just stick with a pretty regular tension in that part of it. Okay, so now we're going to triple crochet in the third chain from the hook. So the chains on your hook do not count. So here's one, two, and three. I always just go under one loop of the chain. It would be the back loop of the chain. So for a triple crochet, so pull this loop up just a little bit so we don't get it too tight. You wrap around your hook twice, and then count one, two, three, triple crochet in the third loop from the hook. Okay. When you do that, pull the loop pretty even with the rest of them. Don't pull it really tight like that. That's another thing that's gonna make the ears curl in. But you also don't want it super loose like that. Okay. Then you yarn over and pull through two loops. Again, pull it kind of even, yarn over, pull through two more loops, and then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. Remember, we have two pieces of yarn held together, so it's gonna look like there's more loops on the hook, but each two only counts as one loop. Okay, so that's the first part, then we're gonna treble in the next chain. So yarn over twice, insert into the next chain, same as the first. Pull it up enough to make it almost even. Pull through two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook. So see how that's not curling too awful bad? You don't want it 
to curl like that. That's gonna be too tight and your ears are gonna curl. Okay. So the next instructions is double crochet in the next two chains. So just yarn over once, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and then the next one. Okay, and then we're gonna half double crochet in the last two chains, so that's one and two. Okay, so we finished that. And then it says to loosely slip stitch in the remaining 29 single crochet. So we already worked into this first stitch, so we're gonna slip stitch into this one first. And you really want to do this loose. This is the top of your basket. You don't want it curling in. So there's the first stitch. Okay, so I make my loop like even. Let me try that again. Okay, do you see how loose I'm working? If you have trouble working loose, just go ahead and increase your hook size. I really give it, I really pull that working yarn up pretty tall before I complete the slip stitch. So let's see, we've done one, two, three. four, five. I'm gonna go ahead and complete the 29 and I'll meet you back around for the second ear. Okay, I went ahead and finished the 28 slip stitches. Should be 29 total. This is the stitch that I marked. I know that's my last stitch and it completes 29 so I know it's correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that slip stitch into that, which is 29 total because the ear was in the first space which completed 30 stitches total, which is what we have in the round. Okay, so now we are going to do the second ear and it's exactly the same as the first ear. We're going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and then treble in the third stitch, or the third chain from the hook. One, two, three. Like I said, I only work under the back loop only. One more treble. Okay, and then it's two double crochets. Sorry, you guys, I'm not used to the tip of this hook. It's a little bit different than those plastic ones. So it's not going as smoothly as I would like, but we're getting there. So one more double crochet. Okay, and then two half double crochets. Okay, and then you can join to the beginning slip stitch if you want, which is this right here. Okay, it's a little tough to get in there. Oops. 
Oops, let's try that again. Okay, then we fasten off. I went ahead and weaved in the loose end on the bottom a, a few clips back just so it was out of our way. Okay, so pull the yarn through. Remember, the basket is now inside out. So turn it right side out. Kind of shape it. See, the ears are floppy, but I'm going to show you kind of how I shape them. So we're going to weave the end in. So I take it from the back side and just kind of put it through there. You can't really see. Let's flip this back side, back side around so I can weave it in. Just weave the ends in. I usually go down the side like this. Don't pull tight, keep it nice and loose so it doesn't pucker the basket up. I usually just go down to the center right here where it's really tight so that it really stays in place and the end doesn't come out. Do just one more time around. Okay. Normally I wrap the yarn back and forth, but this is so tight that it's not going anywhere. Okay. So I just kind of shape the basket with my hand. You can see, see the ears are floppable, but they're completely shapeable. So take the thick part of the top and just like give it a good stretch. Look, that's already standing up. They will move a little bit like that, but like I said, it's more of a decorative piece that you're not gonna be moving around a lot. And then same with this side. Sometimes I actually like the top of one of them to curl a little bit. So see if I don't completely stretch it out and shape it. There's that, but I usually like curl the one in like that. Because I think it's cute. And look, they stand. They're not, they're pretty sturdy. They're not very floppy. I will say some colors are thicker than others and hold up better. This color was pretty thick. The gray marble is really thick. The tweeds and um, colorful ones always seem to be a little bit thicker, so they stand up better. So there you have it. So the basket's done. Oh, one more thing I will say about the basket. If you have trouble getting it shaped real nice by hand, I usually take like a little glass Pyrex bowl. This one is a two cup bowl and it happens to fit in this size perfectly. And I put it in the side, put it inside and you can really <clears throat> get a good shape. Press down, <clears throat> let it sit there for a little bit, pull it out and then you have a perfect shape. Okay, so we are going to move on to the tail portion and then our little cute basket is finished. So I will get my uh, fur yarn out and I will meet you back here in just a Okay, minute. so for the tail, we use the Go For Faux yarn. So when I originally wrote this pattern, that yarn I believe came in a size four and now it's super bulky, but the super bulky is actually three strands that are woven together and you can just untwist them. If you prefer, you can go up a hook size from the pattern. So go up from the eight millimeter hook and use all three strands together. 
And when you're making the tail, just do less stitches. I would say instead of the 10 that it says in the pattern, do only six half double crochet into the circle. Um, but if you don't have the larger hook and you don't wanna deal with changing hooks, just um, unwind the strands and you'll have the smaller strand that works fine with the L hook. So we're gonna do that today because that's what I used for the original pattern. But you can play around with the size. You can also make a pom-pom. You can use um, a yarn pom-pom or a faux fur pom-pom, whatever you want. So leaving a long tail end, create a magic circle, insert your hook, pull up a loop, chain one. We're gonna do 10 half double crochet in the circle. You do wanna work this loose so you can fill your stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Be careful when you're pulling the end closed because this yarn breaks really easily. Your best bet is to just get it as tight as you can and then weave this in around the center to close it up tighter. Okay, so we're not gonna join, we're just gonna go around and do five half double crochet two together. So with this yarn, you can't see, so you have to kind of fill for your stitches. It's very forgiving. So if you skip a stitch or miss a stitch, you're probably not gonna be able to tell. So just kind of fill around. There's one. So a half double crochet two together, you yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, then yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. That's three. Let me untangle my yarn here. Okay, I'm gonna untwist my yarn and then I'll meet you back here when it's finished and we'll put the tail on. Okay, so I finished that up. I weaved in the middle to kind of close up the center. I accidentally broke it so it's a little bit shorter than I would like, but it will still work. Like I said, this yarn is fragile don't pull too tight, it will break. So after you finish that last round of half double crochet two together, you can take your needle around the edges and kind of go in and out to cinch it closed. This does not have to be perfect, it doesn't show. It just helps close that in a little bit more. Like that, I usually take these ends afterwards and do a little knot like that. <clears throat> there you have your little tail. So if you want to just hot glue it on, just finish weaving these tails in a little bit better and cut them off and just glue it right on. It works really well, it's really easy. Then you don't have to fuss with sewing it on. But if you wanna sew it on, I just literally take these ends with my yarn needle, kind of put it in place where I want it. And then just put your needle through one side, then do it the same on the other side. Then I usually tie it in the back, do a good knot. Make sure the tail is sturdy. It's not like moving around. And then I take these ends and weave it in throughout this so it doesn't show. So I can usually get that piece to blend in as well. But it, like I said, it's a lot easier to just glue it on. 
but you can just finish taking these ends, weave them on your backside, try to get them in between this yarn so that it doesn't show. And then your little basket is all complete. How cute is that? Like I said, you can fill it with flowers, candy, give it as a gift. I really love them. So I will put all the information, the links, all the yarn I use, um, information about the tails, um, you know, how the yarn has switched over the years. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know below. And I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Have a good day.